Welcome back to another set of Mercury Playground. In this one, I make the very volatile, even more flammable, isobutylene. Isobutylene is arguably even more versatile than terbutanol because it is a very reactive alkene. It can react with hydrogen halides to form terbutyl halides. Elemental halogens form vincinyl dihalides. Hypochlorides and hyperbromides form epoxides. Acid catalysts can polymerize isobutylene to polyisobutene, which are important plasticizers. In the presence of isobutane and high pressure, they can couple to form 224-trimethylpentane, commonly known as motor octane. But that's enough about the wonders of isobutylene. Let's begin. The materials you need are terbutanol, phosphoric acid, and polyphosphoric acid. The first thing we're going to do is mix 100 milliliters of phosphoric acid with 50 milliliters of polyphosphoric acid. This will remove all the water in the solution while keeping it relatively mobile. I'm going to add this to a two-necked flask. Before I add in the terbutanol, I'm going to heat the acid up to 150C. In addition funnel, I'm going to add an initial 300 milliliters of terbutanol. That is roughly 3.1 moles of terbutanol. In the cooling basin, I'm first going to add a gallon of 50% Epsom salt solution. This high concentration of salt will cause the water to freeze around negative 7.5C instead of 0C. You could also use antifreezes like methanol or glycols, but this method is much more eco-friendly as it can be used in a garden as fertilizer. The only better salt would be ammonium phosphate, which has 4 ions instead of 2, reducing the freezing point of water to negative 15C. I'm also going to add frozen water bottles, a huge ice pack, another gallon of Epsom salt solution, and a chunk of dry ice. You can see how the dry ice causes smoke to emanate out and over my workbench. In my now fully assembled distillation system, you'll notice the collection flask is in a bowl of ice. That is actually frozen 50% Epsom salt solution. This will keep the isobutylene liquid until it all melts. It is important to drip the terbutanol in slowly so the dehydration can proceed quite rapidly without the interference of alcohol. Later, the terbutanol has created a small layer over the thick acid, so I'm going to heat it up. I'm also going to add another 300 milliliters of terbutanol. With the acidic solution now hotter, let's see if we're making any isobutylene. Well, I'm getting some drops. They seem rather hesitant to fall though. Hopefully production will pick up before all the Epsom ice melts. After a few hours, I shut off the distillation now that the ice has melted. I have it in a freezer so it stays a liquid. I'm just going to wipe off some of the frost and salt so you can all see. The top is wrapped in plastic wrap to give it some room, but you can see just a brief wipe down caused some to evaporate, making the plastic bloat a little. After transferring, you can see it almost fills the container. Though the stated volume is 250 milliliters, it can actually store almost 300 milliliters, so I got around 300 milliliters of isobutylene. I'm going to pour a sample into a balloon. As the liquid evaporates, the balloon will expand quite rapidly. Pretty soon at room temperature, the balloon takes on a fuller shape. If I touch it with my bare hand, it quickly expands a little more. It soon has the fullness of a very large egg. When I pour some warm water over it, it expands a bit more. When I pour even more water, it soon becomes so big that I cannot even fit into the beaker. As a final test, I'm going to see if isobutylene can ignite like a hydrogen balloon. Whoa! Let's see that in slow mo. Hear that boom? This balloon literally shot flames everywhere. I burned through half a gallon of water in less than 10 seconds to quench them all. That's almost incredible. But anyways, now we know we have made isobutylene.